In this chapter, we will be learning about logarithms. In this lesson, we will be looking at the applications of exponential functions. We will start by looking at the compound interest formula. So one of the first things we're going to talk about in terms of applications of exponential functions here will be the compound interest formula. Okay, so a equals p times 1 plus i to the n. Now, this is typically used in the context of money, investing money, borrowing money, and so on and so forth to, to model how money grows here. But really, this is more like a, a population formula, okay? Because it identifies how a population grows, and it does a really good job of it, okay? So some things to notice here, P right here is going to be the principal amount invested or borrowed, which means the initial amount. Okay, if you want to think of it like that, this is the initial. Or if you want to think of it, this is the initial population. Okay, that's where my population starts. So again, this could be a population of, we could use this to model a population of people, population of fish, population of rabbits, whatever. Okay, this is a, a good model for that. There are, there are some uh, limitations to this, or there's uh, little quirks about this formula that you've got to be aware of when you're going to apply it like that, but we'll talk about that in just a second. A is going to be the final amount, okay, and so it includes the original principal plus any interest. So this could be like the final population, okay. So in other words, the, the population um, at a given time later on. Now this assumes that there's, <laughs> there's no death in the population, okay, so it's not a great model, but, uh, but it, it's a good model for like kind of short term. Uh, I is the interest rate per compounding period. Now this is really important, per compounding period expressed as a decimal. Now when we talk about compounding period, what we mean is the number of times the, or the, the, the time period over which the, the interest is calculated. So for example, if it's compounded twice a year, so that means that the interest is calculated in June and then added, and it's calculated in December and added to the amount. Okay, so basically the compounding period is the amount of time that it sits in there and then after that time the interest gets added. Okay? And so then N is going to be the number of uh, compounding periods. This is the total number of compounding periods. Okay, so we got to be, uh, we got to be clear on, on that. Um, and so if it's compounded twice a year, let's say it's compounded twice a year for 10 years, well then N is going to be 20 because it's been in there for, for 20 compounding periods. So now interest rate per compounding, this is, this is the, um, if you want to think of it, this is the growth uh, factor, the growth, uh, I don't know, it's the, the, the percentage growth per year sort of thing. Say percent growth per year. Now, or actually the percent change, actually that's probably a better way to describe that. Let's, let me put it down here. This is the percent change per year. Okay, because I like what they do with the compound interest formula here. Notice that what's inside here, let's zoom right in on that. Notice what's inside here is one plus I. Okay, now the one, if P represents that initial population, the one represents all of P. Okay, the whole population. If you, when you distribute this through, let's just assume this is over one year. So, so it doesn't matter what the compounding period is. Let's just say this is one year. Okay, P times one is P. P times I is going to be the percentage growth here. Okay, um, so I can be positive, can be positive or negative. Okay, positive if the population's growing. Negative if we've got decay. Okay, if we are losing population, then I is going to be negative, but we're going to relate it back to the total population here. So for example, if we gain 5% per year, that's going to be 1.05. Okay, 1 plus 5%. If we are losing 5% per year, this is going to be 0 0.95. 1 plus negative 0 0.05. Okay, and so basically what happens here is this one plus i, and I'll write, maybe write it down here. The one plus i is going to represent the percentage left over, or the percentage remaining, okay, after that year. Okay, so hopefully that, that makes a little bit of sense here. 
Now let's just take a look here at the different compounding periods. If we're going to just just calculate interest annually, then that interest rate, there's, there's no need to change it, okay, and then the N is just going to be the number of years that it's in there. However, if we're going to compound the interest semi-annually, that means we're going to take our interest rate and divide by two. So for example, if we're getting, let's just make round figures here, 10% per year, okay, in June you're going to get 5%, in December you're going to get the other 5%. We're going to split that up into two, to, uh, into two calculations there. But then because we're compounding it twice a year, if n is the number of years, or sorry, if n is supposed to be the number of compounding periods, we're going to multiply the number of years by one. The number of years by two. Okay, number of years by four. So in quarterly, for example, we're going to take that interest rate and divide it into, into four bits. But if, if the n here is going to be the number of years times four. If we're doing it monthly, we divide the interest rate by 12 and then we take the number of years and we multiply that by 12 to get what n is. Okay, so now we'll do some examples so that they probably help clarify some of the, maybe some of the confusion that might be uh, surrounding this. $5,000 is invested for seven years compounded quarterly at 6% per annum. Determine the amount of interest made. Okay, so let's just start pulling information out of this. $5,000 is invested for seven years. Well, first of all, $5,000 is invested. That's P. So my P here is going to be 5000 okay? For seven years. Now, uh, I don't know what that means yet. It's a good indication that this is N here, but N isn't seven. N is the number of compounding periods. So i got to think about this. It's compounded quarterly. Ah, compounded quarterly means that my N is going to be seven times four or 28. The total number of compounding periods is 28. Now, compounded quarterly at 6%. That means my I is going to be 0 0.06 divided by 4. Okay? So we're taking that interest rate, we're dividing it into quarters, and you'll get that, you'll get a quarter uh, after the first three months, a quarter after the next three months, a quarter, a quarter, and so on. So we want to determine the amount of interest, uh, the amount of interest made. Okay, okay. So the amount that we're finally left with here is going to be the principal, 1 plus i to the n, that is going to be 5,000, 1 plus 0 0.06 over 4 to the 28. Now I'm just going to evaluate that. So I'm going to yank out my calculator here, put that down there. Okay, so 5,000 times 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 4 close the brackets there, to the power of 28. And we're left with 7,586 and 11 cents. Okay, so 7,586 dollars and 11 cents. Now, that is not actually the answer to the question. Okay, because this represents the amount of money that we had at the end in that account there. But the question is about how much interest was made. So interest, okay, the amount of interest that we make is going to be the accumulated amount minus the principal. So 7,586.11, we're going to subtract 5,000 from that because that's what we plugged in initially and we are left with $2,586.11. That's how much interest we made. Joe invested $2,500 for four years, compounded semi-annually and received $843.26 in interest. What was the annual interest rate? Okay, so it says here, Joe invested $2,500, so that's the principal. That's how much this investment starts for. Starts with, okay, uh, four years, uh, I don't know what that means yet. Compounded semi-annually, okay, so semi-annually means twice a year, so that's going to be, N is going to be four times semi-annually two. So in four years, this thing will have been, will have compounded eight times. And receives eight thousand four hundred thirty. Uh, sorry, eight thousand. <laughs> sorry, I can't believe I read that. Uh, eight hundred forty-three dollars and twenty-six cents. Okay. Now, what was the annual interest rate? So in this case, we're looking for I. Now, we're actually not told. We're not told here what A is. We actually got to figure that out. But A is going to be the sum of those two. So, two thousand five hundred plus eight hundred forty-three dollars and twenty-six cents. 
Uh, so what are we going to get here? We are going to get uh, three three four three point two six. That's how much money we were we had accumulated at the end here. So now here we go. So a equals p one plus i to the n. Now remember we're looking for i, but i this thing has been compounded semi annually. So I have to I have to know something about what I've do, been doing to i here in this particular problem, and I'll figure that out when I plug everything in here. This is going to be three three four three point two six equals two thousand five hundred one plus. Now right here. I know this is compounded semi-annually, so I know that that interest rate there, that i, is actually going to be i over 2. And this is going to be to the power of 8. Okay, now, this is not an exponential equation. Please, please resist the temptation to want to pull out logarithms here. This is not exponential because the variable is not in the exponent, the variable is in the base. So. I just got to work my way in, okay, to try to get that i here. So uh, to, to do this, the very first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to divide both sides by that 2,500 so that I can isolate the, well, essentially the power here. So 3343.26 3, divided by 2,500 is going to equal 1 plus i over 2 to the power of 8. Now let's think about this. i is not in the exponent, it's in the base. So how do I deal with this? Well, I take everything to the reciprocal exponent. So this is going to be the eighth root. Sorry, I was going to write that out a little differently, but let's do it like this. The eighth root of 3343.26 3, 3, divided by 2500 is going to equal uh, well, 1 plus i over 2. Okay. So that's, I've gotten rid of that exponent there. Now I'm going to bring the 1 over. So this will become the eighth root of 3343.26 3, 3, 3, uh, 3. over 2,500 minus 1 equals i over 2. And now I'll multiply this whole thing by 2. So 2 times the eighth root of $3,343.26 divided by 2,500 minus 1, all minus 1 there, equals the interest rate. So now, now we go to the calculator. So. This is going to be two times the eighth root. Now, I, I would be, well, okay, we'll do it like this. Oops, sorry. I, ah. Sorry, if I'm going to, ah. <laughs> if I'm going to do that, I got to do it like this. I got to put the eight there first, then math down to number five there. And now that's the eighth root of 3343.26 3, 3, divided by 2500. Uh, I got to cl either close. If I'm using an older calculator, you're going to have to close that expression with parentheses there to tell the calculator that we're done with the radical, or just use my arrow to get out. Uh, oops. Oops. Now I've screwed this up. I needed a set of parentheses right here. So I'm going to go second, del I hope you guys know how to do this. Second delete is going to be insert. And now what's going to happen here is I can put a, a set of parentheses. I can insert that in there. You don't have to go through and retype the whole thing out. This is a wonderful little tool here. Second uh, delete allows you to insert. Now wherever you put the cursor, it'll drop that whatever symbol you're inserting there to the left of it. Now press enter and I get this point zero seven four. Bring the decimal over to, so I get zero point zero seven four. Now that's approximately equal to i because it's not perfect, but it's it's really close here. So this means that i is basically 7.4 percent uh, annually. Okay, so that's that's essentially what our interest rate is. Good. Now again, remember in these questions here that if the if the unknown is the interest rate here, then you're not going to use logarithms. Now, if the unknown, however, is the amount of time or the number of compounding periods that the money's been in there, then yeah, you will end up using logarithms because now the variable will be in the exponent. Betty invests $3,000 in an account that pays 8% per annum compounded monthly. How long would it take for her investment to double in value? Okay, so we see that Betty invests 3000 Again, that's my principal. Okay, into an account that pays 8%. Okay, so now 8%. But 
uh, I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, compounded monthly. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So I is going to be 0 0.08 divided by 12. Okay. Now, how long would it take for her investment to double in value? Oh, okay. So what we want here is we want our accumulated amount to be double that. We want that to be 6,000. So now we've got A is equal to P times 1 plus I to the N. This time the unknown is up, up here. Okay. Now we have to be careful about this. We have to be really, really careful about this because it's been compounded monthly. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with that in just a second here when I plug stuff in. So this is going to be 6,000 is going to equal 3,000. 1 plus 0 0.08 over 12. It's been compounded monthly here. Now, but N, if I want to figure out um, how long it was in there, okay, I, there's a couple ways I could do this. I could either do this in terms of years or I could let N be months. Because right now, if, if I've divided the interest rate by 12, automatically, whatever that exponent is, it's going to be in terms of months. Now, if I want to figure out how many years that is, what I would do here is, because I know this is how this works, I would take the number of years, let n be the number of years, and multiply by 12. Okay? And then, and then I've converted this to months here. So in this case, I'm going to let n be the number of years. Right there. Now, regardless, if I leave it like this right now, I'm going to have to use logarithms to solve this because my n, my unknown, is in the exponent. So now I've got to work my way to that power. So first of all, I'm going to divide by 3,000, which is going to get me 2. Okay, so it's doubled. So this will be 1 plus 0 0.08 over 12, all to the power of n12 here. Now, I will take the common log of both sides. Okay, so the log of 2 is going to equal... Now, at the same time here, when I take the log of the right-hand side, I am taking the log so that I can bring the exponent down. I'm going to do this in one step here. So this is going to be um, n times 12 times the log of 1 plus 0 0.08 over 12. Now, someone might say, you know, well, why don't you just simplify that? Because uh, the truth is I'm going to let the calculator handle it in a second anyway, so I'm just not concerned. To get n, I'm going to take all of this and divide this over. So n is going to equal the log of 2 divided by 12 log of 1 plus 0 0.08 over 12. Now remember, n in this case here, because of how I adjusted the exponent here, n is going to be the number of years. Just going to keep that in mind. So now let's go to the calculator. And so we'll enter this in here. So this is going to be the log of 2. Close brackets for the logarithm to, to stop that. Okay, so. Now we can divide by, and I'll open brackets here because I've got two terms in the denominator. So 12 times the log, and again, it opens another set of parentheses there, 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 12. Okay, I'm going to close brackets for the logarithm. I'm going to close brackets for the denominator. And we get, what is that, 8.69. So this is, this is approximately, what is it, 8.7 years. Okay, so it looks like this would be doubled, it's, it's doubled in year nine. Okay, eight years have passed and in the ninth year it doubles. Um, let's, I'll tell you what, let's multiply that by 12 and just see how many months that was. Okay, 104.3, okay, approximately 104.3 months or in, in month... 105, okay, because 104 months was not quite enough to do it, so 0.3 of a month in, we're at that point here, so that's basically it happened in the 105th month when the doubling occurred. Now we'll look at a variation of the exponential function called the growth or decay formula. So now let's take a quick look at another um, model for growth and decay here. This is specifically the growth decay model here. Now what this is, is just an adaptation of the, the exponential function right here. Okay, a, b to the x. Okay, where x in this case is going to be an, an element of the, of the reals here. This is just a specific version of it where we're going to allow the exponent to be uh, t over p. And in this case here, this is going to be the time that has passed over the period of growth. So this is very, very similar to the uh, to the compound 
interest formula, I lost the word for a second there, the compound interest formula, okay, A is going to be the initial amount, okay, just like the principal was in the previous one. Y is going to be the final amount or the amount uh, when you stop counting here. So that's the total amount. There's where your A is. Now, T is the total time from when you begin counting to when you end counting. So it's the total amount of time that has passed. Okay. P is the period of growth. Now, in the compound interest formula, um, what, what that is is it's typically one. Okay. In the period is going to be one because we're usually talking about that growth per year, like the interest rate is per year. You might break it up into compounding periods, but it's always, for example, tw uh, 12 periods per year. It's uh, four periods per year, so on and so forth here. So this is typically per year. Now, it doesn't have to be that way though. So it could be some other value here. So for example, if, if we're talking about, uh, I don't know, something let's say the population of, of rabbits that doubles every two months, well then the period of growth is going to be two years, uh, two months here. T would be the total number of months that have passed, but P is going to be two months because every, every pair of months there, that's when, that's when that growth factor kicks in. So, and B is going to be the growth factor. Now, very, very similar to what we have done before, uh, Okay, if you've got a growth rate, if you've been given a percentage growth rate, then you want to deal with it like this, just like we did with the compound interest formula. One plus I. Okay, that, that's the percent growth there. Uh, if we've got decay, if we're losing, uh, then it's going to be one minus I. And we've already talked about that. It'll be exactly the same as it was with the, with the compound interest formula. However, in this particular model, we can also, we have the freedom to talk about doubling or, or even tripling here, where that B value is going to be two or, or three, and very common is this half-life, where the, the growth factor here is a half, so we're, we're, losing, um, we're losing half the population every step along the way. Okay. Now, just to, by way of example, just to illustrate what we were just talking about there, let's say that we're, we've got, um, for example, uh, B is equal to 1.25. What that means is we, are, we have 100% of what we started with plus 25 extra percent. And that's what that 1.25 refers to. Okay. Now at the same time here, if you've got 0 0.85, that means we started with 100%, but we lost 15%. And so that means we've got this, we're decreasing by 15%. There's my 0.85 minus one. We've lost, for example, uh, 15%. Okay, just another way of, of thinking about it here. So. All we're saying here is we've got this other model. It's a slightly different. This allows us a little bit more freedom to talk about the, the period of growth, okay, how long it takes for this growth factor to kick in. Uh, just make sure that, that the units are matching up with the T and the P and that your growth factor represents uh, the actual number that you're interested in. So, for example, if you know that you're increasing by 25%, B should not be 25, okay? An increase okay, by 25% is not 0 0.25. This is actually a loss. Whoops, loss. Ah, can't believe I spelled that wrong. Uh, loss of 75%. Okay, so you just got to make sure that, that the B value that you're using reflects the growth that the question is describing. In 2012, the population of a city was 120,000, and it was increasing at a rate of 3.5% annually. Predict the city's population in 2018. Okay, so in this case right here, we know that the population was, what is it, 120,000 to start off with. So there's my A value. There's my initial, initial population. It's increasing at a rate of 3.5% annually. So my, my interest, or sorry, my Wow, the, I, th I think of it as interest rate still, because it's going to be 0 0.035. But this means that my B value, because it's increasing by that amount, is going to be 100%, point, so 100% plus that 3.5%, so 1.035. That's, that's what the B value is. Okay, It's slightly larger than 1, so that we're getting growth here. And we want to predict the city's population in the year 2018. Well, that is the time that has passed is going to be 6 years. And notice that this is increasing at 3, it says 3.5% annually, which means the period of growth is just one year. So what we're getting here is that the, we've got Y equals AB to the T over P. 
we're looking for y. We're starting with 120,000. Our b value here is going to be 1.035. And this is going to be to the 6 over 1. Okay, so now this is just calculator work. So 120,000, and this is going to be 1.035 to the power of 6. Okay, and so we get 147,500 and, okay, uh, usually these questions are going to be round to the nearest hole. There is an argument that could be said, it's particularly when we're talking about discrete objects like people, that this could, you could argue that this should go either, should be rounded like that, just truncated, or rounded up here. I think for the most part you're going to be told that the thing that you want to do here is round to the nearest hole. So this will typically be 147511. Typically, okay? If the population in the previous question continued to grow at the same rate, how long would it take to double the population of 2012? Okay, so looking at this one right here, uh, in this case the unknown is going to be up in the up in the exponent here because that's where we're going to put time and we're asking for how long it's going to take. So this is going to take a logarithm. I can tell that just, just before I, I get into it here. Now to start off with we know that A, the initial value here is going to be 120,000 because that was the, the starting value of the previous question. Uh, my Y here is going to end up being 240,000 because the question is about how long it takes to double. Okay, so I, I know that that's what, if that's my initial, that has to be my final one here. Uh, we already established that the B value here was 100% plus an additional 3.5%, so 1.35. Uh, we know that the period is going to be one year, so, and again, this kind of, this kind of puts it in the purview of the, the compound interest equation, but that's okay, it's okay, we, we don't mind using uh, this model here because they're all really the same model, there's just, different ways of interpreting the, the different pieces there, okay? And in this case here, what we're looking for is t. We don't know what that is. So let's plug in what we know here. So we start off with y is equal to a, b to the t over p. And so this will be 240,000 will equal 120,000, 1.035 to the t over p. In this case, the p is just 1. Now, I want to get to t here. I will use a logarithm because my variable is in the is in the exponent of that power. But I got to make sure I'm very clear on what the base is, and to do that, I need to move this 120,000 over because it's not part of the base of that power. I want to isolate the power, so I'm going to divide by that 120. Now that is a step, okay? That in in this case, uh, Alberta Learning is assuming that you aren't going to do in, in many cases here, okay? Uh, they figure that that you're going to be pretty focused on dealing with the logarithm here that you'll forget that that 120,000 needs to move. And when you move that over, you'll get 2 is equal to 1.035 to the t. Now, I can do this in a couple of different ways, but I think most of us are going to just take the log of both sides, and when you take the log of both sides, you're going to bring down the exponent. Okay, that's, this is why I take the log of both sides, so that I can bring down the exponent. And now I'll just divide. And this will become the log of 2 divided by the log of 1.035 is going to equal t. Now, go to my calculator. Okay, the log of 2 divided by the log of 1.035. Okay, it looks like I'm getting approximately 20 years. Okay, so approximately, let's say 20 point one years, which means that this will happen, if, if we're going to answer it, uh, if we want to be really strictly uh, strict about this, uh, this happens, okay, in year 21, okay, 20.1 means we've completed 20 years and we are point one of the way through the next year, well that, that happens in the 21st year, and that's kind of how we talk about things, okay, so Anyway, that's, that's how you would look at that. Depends on how the question's asked, what they want you to round that to. A car depreciates annually 4.6%. If it is worth $32,000 when it is purchased, how long would it take to be worth under $20,000? Okay, well, this is one of those more depressing problems <laughs> because it's probably more true than false. Uh, anyway, a car depreciates annually at 4.6% here. Okay, now what that means is 
my the interest here, okay, the percentage here is going to be negative 0.046. Okay. Now, in terms of my exponential uh, model there, think about my b here. I'm losing 0.046 from what? Well, from one, from 100%. So this is one minus 0.046, or this is going to end up being 0.954. So this is what we're left with. We're left with 95.4%, which is actually probably not true. It's probably a lot worse than that. But anyway, we're starting with a car uh, valued at 32,000. So that's my A value, my initial value there. And I want to know how long it's going to take. So I'm looking for the exponent. I'm looking for T. Uh, I know that my period here is going to be 1, okay, because we're talking about an annual depreciation here. So P is equal to 1, and we are looking for the value, the final value, to be 20,000. Okay. Now, it says here to be under 20,000. We're just interested in the time that it hits exactly 20,000 because beyond that, it'll be below 20,000 here. So let's take a look at our model. Y is equal to AB to the T over P. So 20,000 is going to equal 32,000 times 0 0.956 to the, uh, sorry, to the T over 1. I don't know what T is. Okay, good. Now this is very similar to a previous problem here. My variable is in the exponent, so that means I'm going to have to use a logarithm to solve this. Okay, because I can even use the logarithm to bring the exponent down. Uh, now what that means is I got to get that power by itself. I need to move that 32,000 over. So I'm going to divide both sides by 32,000. The 32,000 is not part of the base of that power. It's multiplied afterwards. So to get to t, I need to get rid of that additional factor. So we'll, di we'll divide here. And uh, let's just think here. When we divide by th uh, 32,000, we just want to simplify this because we're super lazy. The thousands will cancel. We'll end up with 20 over 32. Uh, each got a common factor of 4. So 5 over 8 is equal to 0 0.956 to the t. Okay. Now we'll take the log of both sides. So this will be the log of 5 eighths. And I typically will do this in one step here. I'm going to take the log of the right-hand side, but the purpose of that is to bring down the t. So I'll just do that right now. So this will be t times the log of 0 0.956. So the log of 5 eighths divided by the log of 0 0.956 is equal to t. And that is going to be equal to, you can see that there, the log of 5 divided by 8 divided by the log of 0 0.956, 10.4, okay, 10.4. So it's approximately 10.4. So it will drop to 20,000, whoops, in the 11th year, okay? Remember, 10 years have passed. We're 0.4 of the way. We're actually close to halfway through the next year. We're halfway through the 11th year, so in the 11th year. In June 2005, the annual sales of SLR cameras for a local store was 435. In June 2011, the store was selling 936 of these cameras annually. What was the growth rate? Okay, so we're, I guess we're assuming here uh, exponential growth. Now, we're going to use June as our starting point here. So A, the initial value was 435. And then our final value here was 936. Okay. Now, uh, da, 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 what are we going to look for here? Well, we're looking for the growth rate. So we're, we're looking for, essentially, we're looking for B, right? And, but remember that B is going to be 1 <laughs> plus or minus I. So what we're looking for here is this positive or negative I here. In fact, probably better off in this case here to think of this as more like plus I and then let I be negative if it's supposed to. Um, and we are talking about annual growth, so P is just going to be 1 here. And sorry, we already know, oh, I'm sorry, we already know T. I'm, <laughs> I'm just doing this as if we're looking for T again. We're not looking for T. We know T. This has been six years. Okay, because we went from 2005 to 2011. That's a six-year difference. So here we go. Y is equal to AB to the T over P. Uh, we've got 936 is equal to 435. Uh, B, don't know what we're going to do with that, to the 6. 
Now this question here does not require logarithms because the variable, when we look at the power, the variable is not in the exponent, it's in the base. I still have to isolate it though, so we're going to do 936 divided by 435 here. So 936 divided by 435. I'm going to do this on the calculator, just going to see if I can reduce that to a nice fraction. Uh, it really doesn't simplify down all that nicely. Um, it did simplify down to 312 over 145, but uh, yeah, I don't know that that's a huge, <laughs> that makes a huge difference at this point. And now what I'm going to do here is take the sixth root, okay, I'll take both sides to the sixth root here. So the sixth root of 312 over 145 is equal to B, and this is going to be approximately equal to, well, I'll go to my calculator here, okay, and I will do 312 divided by, what was it, 145, and I'll go to the power of 1 divided by 6. I actually like doing it this way because I think it's a little quicker than, than using that other, the other function in the math menu. Press enter. Okay, we get approximately 1.136, so approximately 1.136, da da da. But remembering that B, B is supposed to be 1 plus I, so 1.136, 1 plus i, take the 1 off, and we're going to get 0 0.136 for i, which means we've got a 13.6% growth rate. Okay, whoops, there you go. That's what we were looking for in this particular problem. Okay, so again, it was, it was part of the base of the, ex, the, the power there, but you have to adjust that a little bit because remember, just like it was with the compound interest equation, that base is going to be altered. It's either going to be slightly larger than 1 or slightly less than 1. And it's, it's that, that amount that it differs from 1 that we're looking for in most problems. A sample of bacteria measured 240 cells. 12 hours later, they discovered 5,248 cells. Find the doubling period of this bacteria. Okay. So here's one that's got a little, uh, something a little bit different to it. Um, in this case here because the period of growth is going to be different here. Now we start off with A is going to be 240 cells and we end up with uh, 5,248 cells and that happened after 12 hours. So the amount of time that's actually passed was 12 hours. Now we don't know what our period is. We don't know what the period of growth is but we do know that we are doubling. Basically, we've got like, if you want to think of it like this, it's a 100% increase in, in uh, population here. So remember, B kind of starts, it's, it's, B starts at 1 and we either increase it by a percent or decrease it by a percent. This is like 1 plus another 1. So this is, and that's kind of our percent growth there. Okay, we got 100% growth to take us to doubling. Okay, now plug all that in. And we start with y equals a, b to the t over p. We get 5,248 is equal to our initial 240. Uh, we're doubling, so b is equal to 2. Uh, we've got 12 over p. Now, finally, we've got a question here where we don't know what the period of growth is. So we're, we're looking for that. It's still in the exponent, though, so I'm still going to have to use logarithms. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide by that by that coefficient there, that 240, because I want to get the power by itself. So, and I'm just going to actually write it like this, because I'm going to end up using a log of that in just a second. So 5,248 divided by 240 is equal to 2 to the 12 over p. Now I will take the log of both sides, because I want to get the exponent down with its variable. Now, and just like I've done before, what I'll do is I'll bring the exponent down right away. Uh, remember that the exponent is a fraction, so what I bring out front has got to be a fraction. And now let's think about that. The thing that I want, the unknown that I need, is in the denominator here. Okay. So what I should do here is I'm going to multiply both sides by p. So I will get p times the log of 5,248 over 240 is equal to 12 log 2. Whoops, can't see that. And now what I'll do is I'll just take this number and divide it across. Now remember, that, that, that log, it's just a value, it's just a number. So P is going to equal 12 log of 2 over the log of 5,248 over 240. We've got P isolated. That's the thing we're looking for. Let's figure it out. Okay. So we've got 12 log of 2 
divided by the log of 5,248 divided by 240. So 2.696, okay, so this is approximately equal to uh, 2.696, uh, what we'll do is we'll round that in a second here. So this was talking about in terms of hours, the time that we were given in terms of hours here. So the period here is approximately, let's say 2.7 hours. Let's just round that to the nearest tenth. Uh, yeah, in the absence of any other information to tell us how we should round that, if we should go to the nearest minute or so on, it, we don't know. We're just kind of guessing there. So let's just round that to the nearest tenth. So approximately 2.7 hours. A medication has a half-life of 10 hours. Determine the number of hours it would take for a dose of this medication to reduce to 5% of its original level. All right. Now, in some cases, this question can be a little confusing because it, it almost looks like there's a bit of information missing. You don't know how much was orig originally there, and you don't know how much is left over. But because we're given a percentage of the original left over here, let's just say that the original here, the original amount in the system was 100, and that the final amount was 5. Because when I do my comparison there, I, that's, that's 5%. That's just an easy thing to do. We're told that we got a half-life here. Okay, which means that our B here is going to be one half. Now, what this means, if you want to think about it in terms of like kind of our percent growth or decay here, okay, the way B works, we start at one, and in this case here, we are losing a half. Basically, this represents a 50% 50 50 loss. Okay, now, you got to remember how this works. So there's a very common misunderstanding here. Um, this is a 50% loss, okay, every time. So it's not like, let's say, in one 10-hour period, because our period here was 10 hours. In one 10-hour period, we lose half of it, and the other 10, next 10-hour period, we use the other half. It's all gone. No, no, no. It's always a, a percentage loss of what you've got left. So it's a half, then you get rid of a half of what's left, a half of what's left, and so on. Okay? Um, it's, 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 how do you, how do you want to think about it here? Uh, with a half-life, for example, how long does it take to lose half of it? Well, it takes that period here. Um, it's, it's the same thing with doubling, okay? Every time you, you double, it gets twice as big, twice as big, twice as big as the step that you're at right now. So if you start at, let's say you've got a doubling thing and you start at, at, let's say, 5. When you double it, you get 10. The next doubling is 20, okay? It's not, it's not like 10, uh, another 5 in there. It's not like we're adding that again and again and again. We're, anyway, hopefully that makes sense that you're, you're thinking about this as a percentage and multiplication as opposed to addition or subtraction, because that's, that's a common mistake there. Anyway, a lot of blah, blah, blah. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, so A, Y, B, P, and what we got here? T. Oh, sorry, we are looking for T because we want to know how long it takes to get to 5%. So let's plug in what we know. A, B to the T over P. So we get 5 is equal to 100, got a half-life, don't know how much time has passed, but we know that the half-life is 10 hours. So my, expo my variables in the exponent, I'm going to have to use logarithms. I wanted that for isolate the power, so I'll divide by the coefficient. I had to do that a few times already. Okay, and so now we'll take the log of both sides. So the log of 0 0.05 will equal, and now remember, I'm going to bring the exponent down immediately because this is why I'm, I'm taking the logarithm of both sides. And now in this case, uh, compare that to the previous question, in this case our variable is in the, the numerator of that fraction. So I'll multiply through by 10 and then divide through by the number, whatever this value, the log of 1 half is, and that'll be t. So now it's just calculator work. So 10 times the log of 0 0.05, close brackets there, divided by the log of 1 half, 43.2. So t is approximately equal to 43.2 hours. Okay, now let's think about that. Again, what that means is 43 hours have passed, so this happens, okay? So this occurs part way through the 44th hour. 
And again, it depends how it's being, you're being asked to round this. There's really no indication here. So 43.2 or think of what it is going through the 44th hour. You're not necessarily rounding to the nearest hole in these cases. Typically with time, you're going to be rounding up. But again, that depends on, on how you're being told to round. So you just got to pay attention to that.